What is up guys? My name is Christine. Welcome to my channel, or in other words, welcome to the Brain XP community, which is what we call ourselves here. I hope you feel at home and let's get started. In today's video, I'm going to be answering the question, what is it like being in the mental hospital? So I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my experiences being in a teen mental hospital. I was 13 years old when I was in the teen mental hospital. I'm 18 now. So it was a couple years ago, but it's still pretty fresh in my mind. I'm also going to be telling you guys about some of the things that I definitely would have liked to know before I went into the teen mental hospital. Um, so if you're kind of struggling with your mental health, you think going to the hospital is necessary, these are the things that I feel you should know. I just want you guys to remember as we go through this video that everybody experiences different mental health challenges. So I was in the teen mental hospital because I was dealing with depression, anxiety, psychotic symptoms, self-harming, and running away. That was my deal. So no matter what you're going through, what you're dealing with with your mental health, don't be ashamed. I promise it's nothing to be ashamed of. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys my five most important things you should know about living in a teen mental hospital. Also remember that every hospital is going to be different, so what I say may not be the exact same at a hospital near you. This is just my experience. Okay, number one is very important because I was shocked when I went to the hospital and found this out. Number one is your parents or your guardians do not stay with you at the hospital. So if you are admitted into a psychiatric unit of a hospital, you will likely be there by yourself. Meaning, yes, there's going to be nurses there, other patients, but your parents and your guardians do not stay with you. At the hospital I stayed at, there was time for visiting. Now, my family would come visit me once a day, because it's all they get is just one time a day for an hour. I think when I was at the hospital, it was between 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Could be different where you're at, but that's what I experienced. I got to see them for one hour a day. Number two is super important. It is a mental hospital is a place of safety. So you don't have your phone. You don't wear clothing with strings on it. I could not wear this shirt there because I have strings here. So things like sweatpants or sweatshirts or hoodies, if they have strings on it, you cannot wear it. Um, you can bring a book to read, but that's kind of the extent of it. If you are in class, which they do whole classes there, especially during the school year, I was there during the summer, so it wasn't a big deal for me. But when you do go to class, you cannot bring the pencils that you use in the classroom outside with you. So once you're ready to leave the classroom, you can't bring really anything. Now there's a common room where we eat, do activities, and all that type of stuff. And in there, if there's anything potentially dangerous that you can take with you, which is literally anything, you can't take it. Number three was probably the hardest part for me, or at least one of the hardest parts, and that is that you are monitored at all times. My blood pressure and my temperature was taken every single morning I was there, and I was there for about a week. So every morning we start off, get your temperature taken, blood pressure, sometimes they'll draw blood as well. You're given your medication and the nurses literally sit there and watch you while you take it. You're also given a daily vitamin, that are kind of disgusting, but... They make you take it and they sit there and they watch you take that as well. I remember that there was one girl when I was at the hospital who absolutely hated the vitamins that they gave us. So she would wait till the nurse would look away for just a second and then hide the vitamin and stuff it in the couch that we were sitting on. Not saying you should do that, but I'm just saying that's how bad it was. So in the morning, I would fill out a food form for the whole day. So you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner, nothing in between, that's it. And basically what you do with on this food form is you fill out what you want for each of those meals, how much you want, and the amount of the servings and stuff like that. And then you give it to the nurse. And after every single meal you eat, you have to show your plate to the nurse when you're done. If you have not eaten enough, they'll tell you and they say go back, eat a little bit more. If you've eaten a fine amount or whatever, they just let you go. But they track what you eat and how much you ate. I mean, they really do monitor you at all times. Number four is that a mental hospital is not meant to be a comfortable place. To be quite honest, they don't want you back and you don't want to go back. That's kind of the gist of it. The reason why they don't want you back is because they want to see you doing well and succeeding. If you come back to the hospital, obviously it might not be that case. And that's what happened with me. I did not want to go back and so after that time I was at the hospital, never went back. Also, you will sleep in a room and the beds are not that comfy, but it's a bed, whatever. And you'll most likely sleep in a room with a roommate. Now, 
you could end up getting a single room with just a single bed, but it's totally dependent on how many beds are available. So you do not get to decide that. Also, the toilets and the showers are very prison-like. And when I say that, I'm not trying to make fun of anyone who's been to prison or anything like that, or if you know someone, I just mean they're exactly like that. What you see in the movies when you see prison toilets and prison showers, that is what we have at the hospital. That is what we use. Super cold, everything's very cold, and I'm not exaggerating that. And it's just, it's not comfortable. So overall, the vibe is very different in the psychiatric unit in a hospital than compared to where you go for physical injuries. And number five, it is a great, 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 great place to meet other teens who are struggling just like you. So we have community circles nearly every single day. At least when I was there, it was nearly every single day. You just go around in a circle, tell a little bit about yourself. If you don't want to talk, totally fine, you can pass. Um, they're not like really pushing you so much. They want to get you to talk and relate to each other, but they don't push you to do it, which is pretty nice. Um, so we have those community circles where we talk about ourselves. We also go outside every single day to play like basketball or whatever. You don't actually have to play those things or use their equipment, but it's just a good time to hang out with the people. There are also group therapy sessions. Those can be kind of heavy, but it does get a lot of emotion out and it kind of helps to relate to each other. I personally met two friends there. I'm not totally in contact with them now, but for a while I was. And what was interesting was that we traded our numbers with each other, our phone numbers. But since we didn't have our phones, we had to count on each other to take home the piece of paper we wrote our number on, bring it home, put us into our contacts, text each other, and once we were all out and released from the hospital, we could communicate. Now, we all got out at different times, so it's kind of hard to get that going, but it did go for a little while. I will say that staying in a mental hospital is one of the most incredible experiences for not feeling alone. It's just... It blows your mind what other people are going through and you look at yourself and you're like, my life's not that bad. <laughs> so those are my five things that I'd like you guys to know about living in a teen mental hospital. Um, I do actually have a book out, it's called Brain XP, Living with Mental Illness, A Young Teenager's Perspective. I wrote it and all of my experiences at that teen mental hospital are written in that book. The link will be below if you want to check it out. It's really cool, you can get more of the experience if you're into that kind of stuff. And to stay up to date on the Brain XP community, as well as myself, follow us on our social media. The links will be below as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with someone who you think needs it. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.